We'll bring you more updates on this developing story during the course of the day. In the meantime, in Athrawa State, the People's Democratic Party agents during the 2023 general uh, governorship election in the state have told the state election petition tribunal that they signed the result sheets of the election under duress. The governorship election petition tribunal sitting in Lafia, the Nasrara state capital, admitted evidence from four witnesses who testified before it on Monday and witnesses to the PDP and its candidate, David Emmanuel Umbugadu, who were PDP agents during the election, identified their depositions and told the tribunal that they signed the documents under duress. The legal battle is intensifying as the tribunal resumes hearing of the petition filed by the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Umbugadu. Of course, he is challenging the declaration of Abdullahi Sule as the winner of the March the 18th governorship election in Nasrara State. And to get more insights on this development, we bring in lawyer Jide Ulugun. Thank you very much for joining us on TVC News. Again, Mr. Ulugun, what do you make of this uh, issue at hand before the Nasrara State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal? very much for the opportunity of discussing this. Let's start from the position of the Electoral Act 2022 as amended. When you look specifically at Section 65, it really lays a very strong hold on the importance of the returning officer and then, you know, other stakeholders. And what it says is that the decision of the returning officer shall be final on any question arising from or relating to the, you know, unmarked ballot paper, rejected ballot paper, and of course, on the final returning of the winner. And in a situation where you have allegation of durance, then INEC has seven days within which to review, but that also, gives the election tribunal and any court of content jurisdiction the power to review it. And now that the matter is before the tribunal, it's on the, the alleging party, the petitioner, to establish that fact. And when you look at Section 131 of the Evidence Act of Nigeria, the burden of proof is on the one who alleges and is depending on the court to reap benefit on, you know, showing or alleging the existence of facts that are asserted before the court. So we expect that PDP will be able to establish that. And from what has been presented before the court, uh, I think it's quite impressive. But having said that also, it's, it's still subject to the admissibility that the court has discretion to exercise over and then we get to know where the, the tribunal will rest their garbage on that because Justice Ajayi has reserved ruling on the propriety of the activity of the document, you know, to further, uh, for further concentration. But let me say this, that in law, duress and undue influence essentially means that a person or party has been forced into taking an action against his or her will. And if this is established, it's a very serious one indeed within the ambit of the laws of the land. And we are monitoring. And if PDP succeeds in sustaining uh, this position, like I said earlier, by discharging that burden of proof, it's really uh, a knockout point. But at this point in time, we cannot preempt the verdict of the tribunal, but it's a very serious issue indeed. Uh, all right, and um, regarding electoral reforms, of, of course, we, we're still in the era of, will I call it post-mortem of the just concluded elections, while we are now at the stage where uh, tribunals across the country are, you know, deliberating on various evidence before it being proffered by uh, deferring or disputants, so to speak. What do you have to say about, about this trend, this trend of um, 
tribunals having the final say. What do you think should be, you know, the way to go in our, our future elections? You know, basically, it is legitimate. The Constitution allows it in the Electoral Act. I just mentioned Section 65 uh, shortly. And then it's, it's a way to go. And you can subject the electionary, uh, electionary uh, processes to judicial intervention. But well, let me say this clearly. The judiciary is independent also. So if parties do not come to the judiciary, the judiciary cannot force parties to petition. Let, let's cast our minds back to 2015 after the election that on SAT and incumbent president, and that's a very heavy one in the country. You know, uh, PDP had a choice of going to, to the tribunal, but the leader, the president then, uh, former president, a Billy Goodluck Jonathan, decided that no, let's concede to this defeat. So nobody approached the tribunal in respect of that. And we have moved on. But if a party chooses to approach the tribunal or court of competent jurisdiction, it is provided for under our laws. So it's now for the tribunal to deliver justice. Like I said earlier, when you come to seek justice, now let me again amplify what we have in section 131 of the Evidence Act uh, in Nigeria. That whoever desires any court give judgment as to any legal right or liability dependent on the existence of facts which he has searched shall prove that those facts exist. So it's not the court that will help you prove your case. And that is why also you have the right to be represented. And having gone through the activities of the tribunal, you have seasoned lawyers there representing the petitioners and the respondents. What we expect is that at the end of the tunnel, then justice proceeds, but you must establish your case. And those opportunities have been given. And that is why you would have noticed that the tribunals are not in a rush, even though these activities are time-bound, so that you can give the platform of fair hearing to all parties and allow them to establish their cases. And the justices that constitute we have to All right. come together and Mr. Mr. Logo, I also want to know, though briefly, because we've run out of time, the issue of, yes, you've said uh, justice must uh, be duly served, but then if at all any infractions, criminal in nature, for example, as this now is found by the tribunal, what would be your expectations? Because we don't really get to hear much beyond you know that that an infraction has been established by the tribunal in terms of electoral offenses and prosecution and uh, you know punishment that is that's that's where i'm headed w what's your response subject to the discretion of the court you know the court is eventually the court with the tribunal will have to decide but let's look at a beautiful case the case of a uh, biasa state then where a governor-elect was already rehearsing for inauguration, and a judicial decision came that nullified the exercise that gave that victory. What happened? It was asked to step aside, and whether they will be further prosecuted also is another discussion entirely. Mm. And let's bring in the case of Oshun State. At the tribunal level, the victory of Adeliki was upturned, but at the appellate level, it was reversed, and the Supreme Court confirmed that Adeliki had been duly elected. And that is in the governorship case, mm. you have the tribunal, the Court of Appeal, and of course, uh, the Supreme Court. And since 1963, when Nigeria became a republic, the Supreme Court has remained the highest court in the land. So right. beyond Supreme Court, you can only go to God mm. for a uh, redress. And so that is where we are now. But I will be advising that all parties in court in the tribunal to marshal their cases and facts and evidence and exhibits and everything very well mm. to persuade the tribunal to deliver justice. But having all right. said all this, when you conclude at the tribunal level, 
you can still rise up to the appellate level. And that of presidential petition, the tribunal level starts at the court of appeal level, then the appellate yes. at the Supreme Court. Right. But then the judiciary is there to play that role mm. of ensuring justice. Didi Ologun, we thank you very much for your insights on TVC News this hour.